Hi guys, welcome to another Learn Electronics Repair video. It's car booty time. I must make a new car booty sign. <laughs> but um, I just got this one computer today and I don't need to open this up to know that it's old. Uh, um, it's got the beige uh, DVD ROM and it looks like a, uh, probably a CD writer actually. So from DVD-ROM, you can assume this is from around the early 2000s or around there, yeah. But a lot of uh, hints on the back. So it only has two USB, but it does have onboard LAN. And this card here, which looks like a serial port, if you kind of like look down inside it, you can see it goes onto a ribbon back here, which goes to the motherboard. So the fact it has the effectively one Centronics port for a printer when we used to have Centronics printers parallel port game port this has got to be something like a P4 473 or an AMD equivalent of that I think a uh, little oh, a couple more USBs in the front of the case so that's what we have this looks like it's like a lot number from an auction or something. I'm sure that somewhere on this island is an auction, but I don't know where it is, and I've asked around, and, and nobody that I've asked knows where it is anyway, so yeah, I'd love to know where that is. Because I see this sometimes on things, and I'm guessing this looks like it could be like a lot number. Case is hanging off. But as I say, I don't need to open this up to know it's going to be quite old. Um, just behind me, by the way, if you notice, I've moved some stuff around. I've moved the BGA rework station. It's still here. It's just sort of further around the corner. I'm rearranging all that side of the office for another project I have in mind. And I'll let you know more about that later. It might be interesting. Yeah. Uh, but for now, let's open this up and let's see what we've actually got. Yeah. It cost me uh, 15 euros, by the way. So 15 euros for this one. I offered, you know how it goes. He wanted 20. I offered him 10. He turned up at 15, which is normal. Yeah, that's a fairly normal state of affairs. So let's see what we have here. Is it a? What do you think? What do you think, guys? What do you think? Yeah. Final look at the back of it. What do you think? Is it a P4 socket 478? Or is it an AMD equivalent? The fact it's only got two USBs on the back of it makes me think if it is a 478. It's quite an old one here. Yeah. What we got? It's all so I can just just looking down inside it. Uh, a few more clues, yeah. So we can we can see PCI slots in there, yeah. We can see PCI slots, and it's not a full size ATX. It's like a, it's like a, it's not far for full size ATX motherboard. Right, I guess this suspense is over. Yeah, can't drag it out any further. Right, what have we got? What's in the box? Well, that is what is in the box. QDI. I used to build computers using QDI stuff. This looks like it's what I thought it was. Um, this looks a bit unusual, but looks like a heatsink of a socket 478 Pentium 4 SIS chipset. Hmm. Two sticks of RAM. Complete machine with a hard drive, which is IDE. It has a date on it. Uh, 2003 uh, 19 x 103 so that is like I would think uh, beginning of 2003 this must be a socket 478 pension 4 ok let's do all the usual stuff so we have 12 volts coming in here so we can measure the voltage on there make sure that's up oh, tell a lie sorry we can measure the resistance on there, make sure we have no shorts in the VRM. There's quite a few capacitors down here, but they all work visibly okay. Ah, oh, but there's some capacitors gone here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, these are bad. So uh, 
We'll have to take this motherboard out anyway. So I think I might as well actually just dismantle the machine. It's got to come out anyway, yeah. AGP slot. Okay, let's just take it apart. Let's see what we have. Uh, starting with a hard drive, IDE, one jumper on. So these, if you were not that familiar, you have to put these little plastic jumpers on to set the master or slave. This is set to master. Um, you can also limit the capacity to 32 gig, which is something to do with support for older processors, basically. So 80 gigabyte hard drive. I wouldn't be surprised if there's an operating system on it. Uh, beige floppy, nice and clean because it was behind the front panel of the case, basically. Uh, same date, 19 something 103. Why it says X1, I don't quite know. Everything's been marked on here, yeah. 19X103. So I guess 19th of January. Uh, DVD ROM. Super multi LG secure disc. Writer. And this is actually more recent. So this is from uh, 2009. You can see there's a date on there, which is very strange that I have a beige. Right, so from 2009. Huh? What's that? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? February 2009. Is it from February 2002? That makes more sense, you know. Makes more sense. Okay. Multi DVD writer. And the motherboard so this is the uh, capacitors on the 12 volt rail these are on the v core by the looks of it a whole bunch of them down here and they visibly all look good okay and then we have these so these are almost certainly on the ram supply and they are most definitely bad and we have more of the same sort over here that one's bolted as well not as much so but it is these are all definitely bad there's a whole batch of these so every one of this type has failed basically oh one more okay so this needs recapping without a doubt but i wouldn't be surprised if this actually powers up um anyway it's got on board video let's uh just out of interest, let's see if a motherboard with capacitors as bad as these will actually boot up, at least to the BIOS, yeah? I'm not saying it would be stable. But out of interest, let's see if this will actually power up. Okay, I've a uh, known good power supply attached. Um, I won't bother checking anything, CMOS and whatever first. Let's see if this actually does switch on. So, well, if I switch the power on to the power supply, it might have a better chance. That's, the <laughs> That's what I can think about that. Let's see. Fan's a bit noisy. And it just makes one long continuous bleep so there is some life in it but it just bleeps yeah um so the answer is with all these bad capacitors no it does not boot up i didn't get a picture interesting to see what the post analyzer says yeah and then we'll replace the capacitors and see if that fixes the problem okay so uh Put this camera down here where you can see it. There's the analyzer card, okay. Let's power on again, let's see what it does. It's trying to boot, isn't it? It's trying to boot with the bad capacitors. Okay, let's change the capacitors before we do anything else. And then let's see if that actually makes it work.
I have to remove the ram to do this. I mean, dirty ram could also be a reason why it stops like that. It's uh, these are DDR four hundred one gig. This one is a uh, two fifty six meg. Hmm. Well, actually, that's a valid memory configuration. It's got that's got my interest now. Actually, before I just do anything with these caps. Although these appear to be on the RAM supplies, I wouldn't be surprised. Just uh, put one strip in. Okay, carry it on. Analyze it. Uh, connect the power supply, Richard. Okay, what's it do? Well, actually, it boots. Yeah, or it hangs on another code, 2525. It actually went a little bit further. That surprised me a little bit, but it was interesting, yeah. To do with just this one here. Okay, have it on. That actually booted. So there you go, guys. So a motherboard with capacitors that bad. It's a Celeron CPU. I can see what it actually is now. It's actually booted up with that. It's actually booted up. Uh, we still need to change the capacitors, but I thought that was interesting. Okay, it is exactly that. Uh, socket 478 Celeron. Okay. I'll take this out anyway because I want to just remove what I can ready to do the recapping. But yeah, there you go, guys. Don't see so many of these. I mean, normally pe pension fours. Yeah, normally pension fours that I find. Okay. Of course, the Celeron is probably worth less, but there you go. <laughs> I mean, the, anything like this with AGP slots, I will buy. And if I don't sell them now, I'll just keep hold of them because I'm sure it, these are becoming more sought after for the simple reason that they run Windows 98, Windows 95, yeah, normally, certainly Windows 98, Windows ME, yeah, as well, usually. So they're nice for old retro gaming PCs. Okay, these capacitors, they all work like the same type, basically. Can we see what value they are? Just disconnect the monitor. Oh, I don't know if I can actually read the uh, markings on you. Obviously, you're a bit blue because I'm lifting the board up. There must be at least one I can actually read them. Well, that's what they are. Uh. One one thousand off six point three. Yeah, uh, thousand microfarads. Thousand offs they are. I've got plenty of them, so uh, I'll get all these removed, and then we'll fit some new ones. These are fairly easy to do. I can do them fairly quickly. You can just see that the negative turn will go to the white part. You see where the markings are. Yeah. So the, in this case, white is negative. Not always. You will need some lead solder. This cheap stuff is working well for me. Yeah, you can get 100 grams, so like about four euros. So I've ordered a couple more rolls, 100 grams each. This is a 50, which I just got just to try it. It's better than the other one I got. In fact, I gave that away to somebody. I didn't like it, but I gave it to him for free, so you can't really complain. Um, okay, yeah, so two of you. Just go for it. Good blob of solder. And we can take these out. And then I've realised I put the blob of solder on the wrong one because that's not that type of capacitor. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good blob of solder in a bad place, yeah. No worries. I certainly bridged that well. Back there. Right, I can see now there is a slight wider space in anyway. 
Um, somebody suggested I try this with like the knife type tip, and I did try. Uh, and I didn't like it as much. It's longer, but it doesn't have the same thermal mass as this BC3. So I'm going to stick with my BC3 tip. Cameras, dab cameras, flashing. Okay. I think there's about a dozen of these, something like that. All bad. Just gently rock it backwards and forwards a little bit. It'll come out easily. There we go. Two of them. Another one here. So when you're doing this, if you, as long as you've got your soldering iron hot enough, you're not using too fine a tip, it will come out very easy. You can see it's taking a few seconds to remove each one. It doesn't take you longer. If it's taking longer than that, you either have the wrong type of tip or your soldering iron is not hot enough. Mine is set to 380 centigrade. And it's quite capable of doing this work. Yeah, another one. Another one here. Okay. Taking a little bit longer, that means I haven't got quite enough solder on. You see, I don't need to use flux to do this sort of work. Okay. Doesn't require flux. I mean, a bit of flux certainly won't hurt, but... Uh, for removing these sort of capacitors, I don't really need to use it. It only tends to cause the vacuum tool to clog up anyway, because I'm going to use the vacuum tool to clean the holes after I've done this. Looks like there are three more. One here by the AGP slot. Okay. Leaded solder you definitely need. out one between the two slots here then a little bit of leaded solder add solder to remove things yeah so it might seem a bit uh, counterproductive but that is the way you do it okay fly wandering around the desk sod off I think I actually got it that time. It's been wandering around here for a few days. I'm sure it'll just drop dead soon. Uh, one more. There's no uh, windows or ventilation apart from the air conditioning in here and the obviously front door to the shop. But I have that locked at the moment anyway. The shopping centre, well, cafe's open, but most of the time is shut. It's Sunday. I just felt like doing a bit of work and then this afternoon I'm going to get on the uh, sun lounger. We have a, a terrace on the house, I have, a, I have a roof terrace, so the top of the top floor is a flat roof, it's quite big, probably f 40 square metres or something. I should know because I covered it in AstroTurf. <laughs> yeah, so I have to remember how much I bought, but it was, yeah, about that, about that I think, 30 or 35, yeah. Okay, that's all the bad capacitors removed while well, I've talked about mostly a load of nonsense. Let's now clean the holes. This is the slightly harder part of the job. And of course you're going to hear the noise from the vacuum tool now. How many did we take out? Two, four, six, nine. There were actually nine faulty ones. And they're all the same value, the same type, yeah. All the same type. Okay. The best way I've found to do this is to add a bit of fresh solder, leaded solder, to each of the places you remove the capacitors from. There's one, two there. Um, you can sort of see where you've been working if I looking where the Marks or you factor here, bits of flux. Three, four. Another one here. 
five. Give me some more. Uh, over this side. Six. Seven. That's where I put the solder on the wrong place. Six, seven. And there's a couple more somewhere. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, probably around here. Yeah. Let's start sucking the solder out. Now, this might not do it alone. I might have to use the hot air at the same time. Yeah. And if you can hear it. Uh, sucking nice and clean. Okay, let's start. So, one here. Just give it a few seconds. Sometimes you'll find that one hole will and one hole won't because of the ground plane. That one actually, yeah, I can see clearly through that. I mean, this is all in real time, guys. So you can see how long it takes to do this sort of work if you've got the right tools. This won't do it alone, use the hot air at the same time, yeah, to warm the area. But these are all coming off okay. Just give a few seconds, this one, um, some over here, and then we can see which ones we've missed. You see, that one didn't come, yeah. They're not coming, so first thing is the tool blocked up. Sound of the pump, I think it probably is. Yeah, it is. It does happen with these things. Just uh, push that through. Okay. So, but. Let's just put a bit of fresh solder on that one. If it will do it now, fine. If not, we'll use the hot air together with it. Let's have a look. So, give it a few seconds. I'm working through it at the light. Actually, that's what I'm doing when I'm doing that to see whether I can see clearly through the hole. Yeah, that's okay. a few seconds that's okay this is the square shaped pad this on the ground plane probably take a little bit longer no it didn't get that one tool is clear okay so when you get a tough one you know what the, you know the score by now don't you when you get one that doesn't want to go there to be quite quite honest this one isn't very clean but you just use the hot air as well okay hot air the soldering tool put them both together and that'll do it yeah nope clogged again you can see i'm spending more time actually cleaning this and then i'm actually sucking the things out uh, stop. This time it's done a good job of clogging up. Okay. Try something. Somebody suggested I do this, yeah. What they suggested is get the too hot with the hot air, then stick it through the hole, yeah. Put it down the nozzle. Let's try it. I've not tried this before. Okay. Let's give it another go.
yes it works that technique thank you whoever recommended that one thank you that is good I'm still not sure this is completely free and clear no now it is okay so we have the stubborn one once again the solder bit of hot air okay get together warm that goes That's how you deal with stubborn ones. How many do I have left? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, four, six. I have three more left to do. Two here, one here. Okay. Let's have a look. See if these will come. If not, we know what to do. Yeah. That's good. Another one over here. also good and one more back here but of course no it's clear I was going to say of course the last one didn't go but it did Okay, so that's how you do that. Uh, if you've got another method, tell me, but you'll be have to go a long way to convince me it's better than this, yeah. Right, so now we recap it. I'm getting a bit low on these ones, so I'll uh, order some more. 1006.3 Sanyo came from AliExpress, they're fine. And we know the negative goes to the white. Once you get to this point, you've basically done all the hard work, yeah. Once you get to the point where you're just inserting the new capacitors, you've basically done all the hard work. Hardest part, without a doubt, is cleaning the holes, as you saw. these on and I'll come back and do the rest of them. Usually what I do is just solder one leg and then I can just push down on the capacitor to make sure it's sitting flat on the board and then the other leg is not a problem to do. Okay.
bend the one you're soldering fairly straight if you like. Okay. Sitting flat. Again, this is all in real time, guys, so you can see how long it takes to do this sort of job. And the answer is not very long. Okay. That fly is definitely slowing down, guys. I couldn't even get near it the other day, yeah. I think it's winding down. Oh, get off! Uh, <laughs> I won't flatten it to put something on video, because I, I just know I just know I'll get criticised if I do that, yeah. I will get some stick for that. Won't do the fly any good either, but... Yeah. I just... I can hear the criticism already. Okay, cut those off and then let's do the rest of them. The reason flies are so hard to catch, I mean, is because like apparently like they see and process vi video images, if you like, they process reality. It's about 300 frames a second, which is a lot faster than mammalian life can do. Yeah, they can also think fast enough to process it. That's why they, why you think they're almost impossible to catch. But my little cat, Munchito. can actually leap up and pluck them out of the air with his paws, yeah, sometimes. And that is because, although the fly can see at a faster frame rate, the cat is far better at calculating where the fly is going to be at the point he reaches that space, yeah. So he, he actually, he, you know, he's using his superior intelligence or his geometrical sense yeah to calculate where the fly will be at the point when he's there and he can catch them tell you about about my old cat munchito he went missing uh, not this tuesday tuesday before he went out and never came back and he was away for a week and then this tuesday I got up in the middle of the night to use the toilet, and he was there. This grey blur, so I didn't have my glasses on, it was dark, yeah. I saw this grey blur sitting on the tile floor, and all of a sudden the blur got up, rubbed against my leg, and went, meow, and he's back. And I guess he went chasing girls, he's now booked in for an appointment with the vet this Friday. But... <laughs> I was so upset about that, my cat going missing. I didn't realise just how much I love that cat. Yeah, I would own up to it. I love my little cat. And when he wasn't there, it's was like the world wasn't right. And I've been playing, because you know, I like retro games and such. I played Torchlight all the way through, and I'm now playing Torchlight 2 because I enjoyed it so much. And in Torchlight 2, you can. Uh, name your pet you know you have a pet that goes with you on your adventures and you can set him to be aggressive or to be defensive and uh, of course i call my pet munchito which is my cat is munchito yeah <laughs> and uh when he went missing for four days i couldn't play my game as soon as i tried to play the game i could see this black panther thing my pet in the game which looked like Munchito to a fair extent, and I couldn't play. <laughs> Call me soft if you like, I don't care. I, I, I completely own up to it. Anybody who's had, ever had a pet or lost a pet 
that they care about will know exactly where I am coming from. Uh, they'll know exactly where I'm coming from. So when he came back a week later, he'd lost about a third of his body weight. He was all skin and bone, but he, he has not been fighting. He hasn't got any injuries. And as I say, he's got an appointment with the vets now to have a couple of things removed. Yeah. <laughs> and that should stop him wandering off, so I'm told. <laughs> yeah. Better for the cat, apparently. I didn't, he's not been asked, by the way. He's not been consulted on this. He's going and that's that. <laughs> so, there you go. Cat's name, Munchita. And now, I can play, so now, and now I can play my game again, by the way, since Tuesday. I can, I can play again. And that, what, about 15 minutes. I can see the time for the video recording. About 15 minutes. So probably when we finish this video, that might have been 25, 30 minutes. And that includes cleaning out the uh, solder sucker, yeah. Right, let's put this back together. And let's figure out what's going on with these two uh, dims as well. Yeah, see if we can get them working. Which is pin one on this? Well, it looks like it ought to go one way, obviously. That way, yeah. CPU. Plenty of heatsink compound on it. Yeah. There's another spot in the middle, I think. Seems I've wiped a lot of it off it. Okay. Just the right amount, apparently. You need just the right amount. Okay, dusty in there, a brush. So let's get the worst of that out. Which of course I brushed all over the board. <laughs> Should have thought that through, don't you think, guys? Should have thought that through a bit better. Uh, get us back on here. Unusual, unusual uh, mounting for that. It's good. I like that. I've not seen one of those before. Yeah, it's easier to. Well, that's a theory. Let's see. It should be easier to fit than the, the usual type P4. Yeah, it certainly works. Okay. Can we get it to see the RAM? I've taken the CMOS out. Check it. as flat as it is flat yeah <laughs> literally okay hi Kia Cheap. You get a pack of eight for like two euros, yeah. Or only one euro when they were in offer, something like that. They were very cheap. I bought a load of them. That's good. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on with this RAM. So this is the one gig strip. Just give it a bit of a, a clean and then try it. I could use a, a rubber eraser, but I'm just going to try a bit of kitchen roll with a bit of ISO on, does it quite well. Okay. Very useful stuff, this by the way. Isopropyl alcohol, you need it. Simple as that, you need it, yeah. Okay. Not easy to get on the island here. Uh, you just have to get somewhere to bring it over from when you go to the mainland. I might have to clean the slots as well, but let's try it. So this is the one gig strip. 
will it work in either of the uh, slots? Let's put the analyzer in. Stick that in. Yeah. Give you something more interesting to look at than me, yeah? <laughs> let's, uh, let's go for it. A power switch. Something else we need. I know you can use a screwdriver, but come on. How much effort is it to make one of these, yeah? Power's off, yeah. Dodgy switch on my Variac. Camera might freeze when I do this. I need, I need to replace the switch on the area. As soon as I touch it, you know, I'm showing you guys. The well, camera's froze, I told you that would really happen. Uh, I told you that would happen. We could even make me swear, yeah. Okay, unfreeze the camera. Okay. Right, power on. Start. Doesn't seem to like that strip of RAM. Let's try it in the other slot. Okay. Try it in here. Power. On. Oh, okay. Doesn't seem to like that slot. Uh, booted up, if you see, one gig of RAM. Okay. Let's go back to that other slot. Give it a clean. Again, a bit of ISO. Well, I'm at it, I've done both. Okay. Then try to repeatedly insert it and remove it. Sounds very positive, you can hear it, yeah? Okay, try it. Power on. Start. Yeah, that's good now. So that's what's working. I wonder if the configuration it came with is valid. Because I don't think these are dual channel memory. I'm sure these are like with 32 bit boards basically. So let's see if it will work with the 256 and give us 1.25 gig. Yeah, let's see if it does. I've got plenty of RAM if it doesn't, but I'm interested to see if it will actually accept it. That's how it came, yeah. Let's try. Yeah, it does. Yeah, 1.25 gig there now, so that's working. Okay, so next thing I guess is let's attach the hard drive and see if this boots. I've uh, got a PS2 keyboard. Um, I often find as well it's useful to have a PS2 mouse. Sometimes you won't recognize the USB mouse when you first boot them and then they will. I've actually put a USB mouse on. Um, I also have one of these. You guys might be interested to see it. So this is uh, another uh, PS2 mouse. Uh, and look, it's one of those. Yeah, it's a wheel mouse. Um, you can see I bought this new a few years ago and uh, it's just handy for old stuff yeah and I thought it was just interesting to see when's the last time you saw one of those yeah okay so mouse keyboard ready to go power on hard drive is attached what's it do Yeah, one bleep. Is it going to boot? Is that one? Detected ID drive? No, it didn't detect the hard drive. Okay. 
could be the cable or something. Let's have a look. So it didn't find the hard drive. Actually, that looks a little bit iffy to me. That uh, cable. I've got another one. Okay. Try it again. So, I mean, I don't know if this hard drive is good. I've got spare IDE hard drives I can soon try another one. Yeah, that goes in better than the other cable does. See what it does. Oh, do you know why it didn't detect it? I've just remembered, just realised. Connecting the power cable to the hard drive might make it more likely to work, yeah. <laughs> I own up to it, guys, though. I fessed up to it, yeah. Connect the power lead to the hard drive, unless you think that might help it to boot. Okay, let's see. Power on. Start. One bleep. Now he's thinking about it. It's found the hard drive. CMOS check somewhere. Okay, let's go into the CMOS and set this up. Let's make the screen a bit bigger so you guys can see. Oh, it's trying to boot anyway. It's trying to boot anyway. Okay. What's it doing? Yeah, Windows XP. Yet another one with somebody's previous life on it. Might not have been used for years. Yeah, a bit of wallpaper there. Excel 24 to the 809. So that gives you an idea what it was last use I see on the icons. Uh, I don't really like nosing around other people's stuff. Mouse isn't working. That's probably the mouse itself. It doesn't let up, yeah. This is what I say with uh, machines with XP sometimes. First, you can't let the USB mouse to work and it will, but I actually think this is actually a faulty mouse. Try again. I've, I've probably got another one somewhere. Didn't light up. I found another one, yeah, I found another one. Yeah. Oh no, it's found, he's it's, it's saying new hardware, found, installed, yeah, it's working. So it did find it. I say sometimes it won't at first, you have to use a PS2 mouse, but then strange enough, normally once you shut it down, it will actually work. Alcohol 120%, my PC. Okay, so... This obviously wants formatting, yeah, documents of yah, 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 okay. I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. That was done in real time, so it gives you an idea how long that sort of job would take. When I review this video for editing, I'm sure at this point I will stick up on the screen. It took however long, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing it was like 30 minutes or less. That's another one saved from the landfill, which is really great. These old 32-bit boards, I'm sure, will become valuable at some point. Uh, SIS651 seems to be the model. S4LE. These QDI boards, I don't think there's quite so many of them around these days. Some of you guys who know your retro stuff, I am sure will be putting something into the comments about that. And that's enough for me on a Sunday. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, have some lunch and then get out in the sun and enjoy the afternoon. Okay, guys, what's to do next week? I have a big on-site job to do. Wednesday is a public holiday, so I'm not working Wednesday. But I have three other videos all in progress. Um, I can tell you now we're going to have a look at uh, dummy loads. Uh, active loads, I should say, yeah. I have a sponsored video, uh, PCB way, uh, building active loads. Um, I have um, GTX, sorry, RTX 3080, 3070. I've partially looked at, and I have 
I think a, a major release for the channel, yeah. So uh, a tutorial video on a particular area of electronics. I'm sure a lot of you guys will be interested to watch and hopefully learn a fair few things. Okay, so plenty to come on the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now guys.